Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and this week we're going on a little adventure to an axolotl breeder as well as to a new fish store. Um, as my daughter, Clelia, wanted to get her boyfriend, Jaden, an axolotl for Valentine's Day. He's been doing a ton of research, but I really wanted to take the opportunity to take him to meet a breeder so he could ask any questions that he'd have, see some adult size of these things, see how they had them set up, and really just be as prepared as possible for housing one of these responsibly. These are a species that are critically threatened in the wild, so it's really important to do them a great service when we keep them. Most notably, these guys do need to be kept quite cool. Luckily, Jaden's bedroom is in the basement of his home, so it's nice and cool down there. And he was able to set up a 20 long with some large river stones, fine sand, and a few low light plants. Now, we went to visit J&J Aquatics in Dover, Delaware, which was over two and a half hours each way, but I really felt like it was important for the kids to have a really good grasp of what they would need to do to maintain these species properly. Now, I have had axolotls in the past, but I don't currently keep them because my fish room is just too warm and I really don't want to set up a chiller. However, this was a great opportunity for me to get some footage and talk to a breeder and share that information with you guys. We were particularly enamored with the leucistic color form, which is like this one here with the dark eyes and the albino body. They're really, really cute. Now, J&J Aquatics has been breeding these for quite some time, and they have a run of basement fish room as well as this axolotl room. Um, and I will make sure to put a link to their business in the pinned comment and the description down below. We just had such a good time looking at these guys and just seeing how clowny they are. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I have been traveling quite a lot. I've been in Florida, South Carolina, New Jersey, and Delaware all within the past week. So I figured I'd just bring you guys along for some of these adventures. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments if you'd like to see more of my travels and fish rooms that I visit. Um, but in the meantime, we're just going to take a look at some axolotls. Now, this is a single spawn from one pair. They had 1,300 babies. So it's really important to keep these guys in either a single sex grouping or on their own. And we're going to take the opportunity now to talk to Justin of J&J &J Aquatics and just have him give us some of his best tips. Again, a huge thank you to him and his family for making the time and opening up their home in order to set us up for the best success possible. That's so cool. Do you have any particular tips that you think are most important for people to know about axolotls and their care? Absolutely. Number one, number one thing is cold temperatures. You've got to keep them cool. Um, do not fridge them. That's horrible advice. Um, they can go alone. There's a couple popular websites that say you need more than one. They're trying to make a sale. They live just fine alone, either sex. Um, they live fine in groups. I recommend only same-sex groups because of the breeding problem. Um, always have an extra tank ready to go for hospital tank. Um, for these guys, you can just put them in tubs like we have here, and they'll do fine in tubs for, that's for experienced breeders, it's not for the average person, but if they do get sick, have methane blue on hand for really bad infections have Indian almond leaves on hand for light infections and anytime you think they're sick for any reason throw an Indian almond leaf in there. That should be your first move. I have those. Okay. And the reason that you tub them when they're sick is so it's a smaller volume of water to treat. You don't have to treat the whole tank. Um, every now and then, like maybe once a month or so, we'll throw an Indian almond leaf in the tank and just let it set. It's never going to hurt them. Um, especially when you're rehabbing them. Um, this little girl back here, we thought she was actually going to morph. She's Oh, I didn't even see her back there. Yeah, she's our smallest one. When we got her, she was oh. skin and bones. She had almost no uh, finish whatsoever. Oh. Poor little baby. And they are predators. They're 100% predators. Um, don't house them with any fish. Yeah. Um, fish will nip their, their <laughs> fins. Yeah. They have very poor vision, so they're kind yeah, of clumsy yeah. hunters, which is why the worms do so well for them. Um, the worms are great for them because they wiggle on the ground and they just walk over and... Okay. Um, earthworms, um, when they get this size. Okay. Red wigglers, when they get a little bit um, bigger. 
wet red wigglers you and earthworms too you might as well just rinse them off it'll help a lot with the feeding okay. because they um they secrete like a not a toxin but it's foul tasting yeah. it's a defense mechanism how long does it take for them to get that size they grow average uh, about an inch, inch a month um, with good feeding. Um, those those over there you want to feed twice a day. Okay. These bigger ones um, we feed once a day with a skip day. Okay. Um, general rule of thumb is they say a pellet per inch. I feed until they don't eat <laughs> And all of them, I spot feed them unless it's worms. If it's worms, I just throw the worms in. I know that these guys will eat the worms no problem. Mm -hmm. So I throw worms in. If you're having problems feeding them, spot feed. Do not use tongs because they can strike the tongs. And even though they regenerate, it's you know whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you ship? I absolutely ship. We ship all across the U.S. Um, shipping varies. Um, it's usually around ten to fifteen dollars for priority. For priority, um, two day priority is fine. We recommend overnight, uh, especially in the summertime. The summertime is the worst time to order oxalotls. Right now is actually the perfect time. We just wanted to come see them, not have them shipped. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Because they were excited. Because it's more fun to come and see them anyway. Yeah, they're so cute. <laughs> I love these things. A phone app to count, there was like a thousand three hundred. From a single spawn. From a single spawn. And that kind of blows my mind then that they are critically endangered in the wild when well, they spawn this readily. They're critically endangered in the wild because of pollution. Well, yeah, one of the areas that they were from was actually drained. Mm -hmm. So um, the area in Mexico City where they are still found is, is horribly polluted. But it, it's kind of mind boggling that with how huge these spawns are that that could be the case isn't it i mean it just shows the effect that humans can have on their environment without thinking this is justin from j and j aquatics by the way how's everybody doing they're so freaking well we would appreciate you making the time for us today yeah thank oh, you so much you. anytime it's always nice to see you again you're so precious all right i'll put a link to your business um with whatever i do with this footage um, as well now, after we were done at the Axolotl Breeder, we decided to go over to a new store that just opened up in the area called Super Cichlids down again in Dover, Delaware. It's owned by Lisa and Martin Hober, and it's a family-run business, and it was incredibly clean and beautiful. Now, we had set Jaden's tank up well in advance and put cycled media in, so it was good to go, but we still needed to get some live food for the axolotl. And I figured since we were down in this area, we'd check out the store. Now, I'd love to come back here and do a meet and greet or do a really thorough full store tour, so let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. This place was immaculate. It was beautiful. The fish were gorgeous, and I was just really, really impressed. While there, we picked up a little test kit for Jaden to be able to test his water to ensure that all of his parameters, his nitrates, his nitrites and ammonia and all those things were in good shape while he's learning about keeping aquariums. We also picked up some pelleted food and a live worm culture and really just took the time to look around. This store was so big, so open, so bright, so clean and just really, really beautiful. Um, I was super impressed. And I really loved how they had little seating areas set around so you could sit down and enjoy the fish. It almost had like a cafe vibe about it. And I really think that this fish store is going to become a destination fish store. So I encourage you guys, if you're ever in the Dover, Delaware area or looking for, you know, a road trip to do to really come visit places like this. These small privately owned stores that focus on good quality fish are something that are dying more and more and really need our support. Um, they had a wide range of products. Uh, their focus is, of course, cichlids, but there was a ton of community fish as well. They also utilized all their top racks for breeding fish in order to um, offer, you know, tank raised specimens to you guys. They also sell some things on consignment, meaning if they have customers who are breeding a specific fish, they'll take them in to sell in the store as well. We picked up a white worm culture. Um, I thought it would be a good choice for Jaden and his axolotls as black worms can can have a bit of a learning curve to using them. 
Um, all in all, though, just super impressed with the store and I would love to go back sometime. Um, I will have a video coming out soon as well as that other store I teased about. It's just taking me quite a long time to wade through all the footage, especially with how much I've been traveling. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on our little adventures, and I'll be sure to keep you updated on how Jaden's axolotl is doing, as well as all the various projects going on in the fish room.